All right, guys, we have some major happening right now in real time, breaking news um, from our friends over there in the UK. Prime Minister Liz Truss has just resigned after only six weeks in office. She, of course, became prime minister after Boris Johnson Mm -hmm. had to resign under pressure for a whole series of scandals that he was involved in. And, Sarah, I've been following this really close. I actually did a monologue here on Liz Truss and her economic plan, what they call a mini budget, which had, like, eye-watering tax cuts for the rich, was so sort of uh, doctrinaire that even the, you know, the sort of financial press, the normal sort of like conservative economic people were like, what are you doing? The British economy nearly collapsed, Mm -hmm. pound plummeted, created all these issues with their pension funds. Um, The Bank of England had to come in and basically bail them out because the whole thing was in free fall. I mean, they really came very close to the brink, especially because as these pension funds were having to meet margin calls, they were having to fire sale their assets, which was leading to a potential contagion throughout the entire economy. So this was a complete and total disaster. Her approval rating in the last poll that I saw had plummeted to 8%, 8%. So even, you know, people who were more friendly towards the Tories, who, you know, sort of like this ideological Mm -hmm. direction in general, were like, what the hell are you doing, lady? She has then, she then had to reverse course. She fired a bunch of people. She said, okay, we're not actually going to do this, trying to stabilize things, but obviously continued to be under a lot of pressure. And now we see she has, in fact, resigned. This is the, let's see, what are they saying? Shortest serving leader in British political history. (laughs) Six weeks on the job, Sagar. Yeah, I was trying to actually think in my head. I'm like, who uh, actually even lasts as long? No, there's been some who only lasted like one or two months. But yeah, six weeks, humiliating fall from defeat. Just to reiterate that, she essentially plunged the economy into complete chaos. She had to fire several aspects of her, or several members of her cabinet, the chancellor of the exchequer. Energy prices have been in complete chaos since they decided to lift the cap. The economy is, is literally in shambles. And the Bank of England had to bail them out at the time when, and it's getting colder across the UK. People are freaking out about, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but in Britain, most of them have adjustable rate mortgages. So when interest rates jack up, well, all of a sudden they're paying, you know, seven, eight percent or whatever interest rates that they were not prepared for on top of inflation in energy. So they need some serious shock to the system. And now, from what I've read, Whoever comes next, this is going to be real tough because, remember, there was a battle between her and a guy named Rishi Sunak Mm -hmm. um, in order to take over. He ended up not being able to get the amount of support that he needed. However, from what I've read, that what's especially chaotic right now is the energy situation because she actually lost a vote just yesterday when her deputy whip and chief whip actually resigned because they weren't able to deliver. That's really what helped bring down the government. It showed Mm. that the party was not behind her and her policy whatsoever. With Sunak, though, he is ideologically a bit similar to Truss. So are they going to go in that direction? Are they going to go back to Boris? Honestly, that seems very likely. The other thing is that if they're unable to get a leader within a week, so according to this, you know, from what I'm reading in her remarks, she said that she will remain the PM for another week until the conservative party can come up. So there is going to be some massive right. jockeying. Well, but, and they're under a lot, they will be under a lot of pressure to call a general election. Like, you can't say, just I, like stick different leaders right. in that no one's voting for and have them make complete messes and think the pub- public is just going to like accept that. And now labor, which was kind of like back on their heels, latest polling has labor party with like a 30 point edge mm-hmm over them now, which is also a really stunning turn of events. And I mean, obviously this has all kinds of implications for us, but you know, a couple things to think about here. Uh, Adam Tooze has been talking, uh, he studies these like poly crises and he views what happened in the UK as a potential warning sign for the rest of the world. Why? Because our financial system is so complex and so interconnected, both domestically and internationally, that you know no one really saw coming that 
a drop in the pound and you know, uh, problems in their bond market would trigger such an issue for these pension funds. Mm -hmm. And that you could have this contagion that really no one saw coming because it is all connected and so complicated in those ways. Well, right now, obviously we're facing any number of global shocks to our economic system. So he's basically raising the question of like, you know, this little uh, crisis scenario we had playing out in the UK, we could be seeing this happen over and over again in places around the globe because of these various economic shocks, you know, including the actions of our own central bank, including the actions of central banks around the world continuing to lift interest rates. What is that all going to do? It really underscores the fact that it is a very dangerous situation. I think the other thing it underscores is how stunningly unpopular this is. I mean, she loves Margaret Thatcher. She is like, you know, modeled herself. She's mm. Thatcher right to the core. She and her cabinet, extremely ideological and had this view of the economy that was just like straight textbook, like right wing think tank, neoliberal to the core. And it shows you what a disaster those economics policies, when actually implemented, actually are and how incredibly unpopular they are as well. You know, you had newspapers celebrating this budget when it came, like, finally a real Tory budget, all of this nonsense because it was so hard ideologically driven. And in the first days, even as this crisis was unfolding, she wouldn't back down. She went on BBC. She was defending it. She was trying to blame all the problems on like, oh, it's Putin's fault. Yep. It's really, you know, it's really not us. It's these other things that are going on around the world, the war in Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera. And so finally, you know, with her approval rating at 8% and her own party completely abandoning her, she is ultimately forced out. This apparently came after a meeting with the chairman of the 1922 committee, which knows how many conservative lawmakers have issued letters of no confidence in her leadership. So clearly they have a majority of the conservative party yeah. issuing the letter of no confidence. The leader of the Labor Party, Keir Steimer, I'm probably saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Keir Starmer? Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer, all right, let's go with that. <laughs> Keir Starmer uh, said that they need to call a general election ASAP as yeah. to whether conservative party can even draw enough votes to come to some sort of consensus and avoid this remains totally unclear. So massive political upheaval. As far as Ukraine, also it does, you know, Liz Truss was frankly even more hawkish on Ukraine Extremely than hawkish. Boris Johnson. So yeah. here, nobody really knows. From what I've read, he had declared what unrelenting support. At the same time, the labor left is a lot stronger than the democratic left in this country in terms of their real pushback against some of the Ukraine policy of the government. So how that would work out in terms of for the geopolitical situation, it matters, but hey, it just shows you there's always 40th order consequences to wars, and this appears to be one of them, as it has in almost every general, in almost every European conflict to yeah. date. Um, shameless plug, we're having Owen Jones, who's a British commentator on Crystal Cow and Friends this week, because um, I wanted to dig into this crisis, which yeah. he calls the Perfect Liz timing. Truster F. Right. <laughs> Um, and so it'll be a great time to, to talk to him and really go in depth here. And, you know, he's on the left, so he'll have a lot of insights into uh, Keir Starmer and the Labor Party. Obviously, all of these parties have different factions and tensions within them. Right. You know, the Corbinites have been sort of like crushed in a way, and the more centrist uh, elements of the Labor Party have been more ascendant recently. So we'll see what he thinks this all ultimately means. But obviously, incredible, shocking, quite historic news out this yeah. morning. My personal favorite, uh, the coda to all of this, is that the day Daily Star had a live stream whether a piece of lettuce would outlast Liz Truss, and the lettuce <laughs> actually won. The lettuce won. People should check out the live stream. It was hilarious. <laughs> they dressed it up and all of that. And today, actually, on the day that she resigned, they had the lettuce with a wig on um, and a keep calm and carry on mug on top of some uh, British flag. I saw this as well. picture on Twitter yeah. and I was like, what the hell yeah. is it's this? It's the lettuce. I didn't, I didn't the lettuce trying to look into it. To Apparently, somebody, there was on. a cheeky comment in a column which was like, a piece of lettuce will outlast Prime Minister Trout. And it actually did. Correct. So there Correct. you go. I love right. the Brits. We're going to get back to our <laughs> show. Let's do it. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.